Hello and welcome to The Album Man and today I'm going to be doing CDs and vinyl I bought recently for March 2013 and there's definitely going to be a big emphasis on vinyl this month as I bought an absolute ton to be honest so good maybe 15 vinyls or something so pretty pleased with that and I also got a few CDs as well but definitely emphasis on vinyl which is really good because I've been lacking in vinyl the last few months to us this year so far I haven't bought much vinyl but that's all changed so, may as well start with the CDs, because I suppose there's less of them. So, some stuff I got, you know, a few stuff, things I got at Car Boot. Um, Magnum's Brand New Morning for three quid. Fantastic Magnum album. I mean, yeah, this is um, their first one after they split up and after they, um, Bob Catley and Tony Clarkin did the Hard Rain thing, if I remember. And this was, I think, their first return album. Um, and then I think there's 2040, and I think Princess Alice was after this, then the Moon King, then the Visitation, and of course on the 13th day. So it's the first comeback album, really, really good album. They definitely came back for Bang, and they've been fantastic ever since. Well, they're fantastic before as well, but I mean, especially fantastic ever since. An album I really should own, and well, now I do, so that's saying. Black Sabbath's Live Evil. I love Black Sabbath, I love Dear Black Sabbath, Heaven and Hell is my favourite metal album of all time, and one of my favourite albums of all time, obviously by default, Dio, my favourite vocalist, so why didn't I have this live album? You know, it's never sort of really at the right price, but for three quid, uh, it is the remastered one as well, which is pretty cool, wouldn't get the non-remastered one. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think the problem I have with this, he does sing a bit too much Aussie stuff, I mean... You know, he, he he doesn't do things like War Pigs and Children, The Grave and Iron Man and Black Sabbath or NIB as well as Ozzy did. Obviously, they had massively different vocal styles. Well, Ozzy would sing with a riff, Dio would sing over it and over the top. You know, very different vocalists, comparing them to like apples to oranges. Personally, I do prefer Dio, but, you know, they weren't as compatible. I would rather with them, I mean, you know, they're playing 14 songs on this. This is after Mob Wars. So they had at least, like, what, 18 odd songs to pick from? Yeah, they should have just played that. Okay. Next, we have something especially cool Coheed and Cambria's Afterman Desension. And the thing that's cool about this is that it's signed. Let me find the. get the booklet out. So, yes, it's signed by Claudio and the boys, so that's very, very cool to get. Um, yeah, so I've been listening to this. I'm not sure it's as good as Ascension, but um, I really like it. I think it's a fantastic album, um, especially like... Um, oh, I really like the Hard Sell, the single. I think that's a really good song. But I just wish maybe they might have done something a little bit longer, you know, a, a bit more of an epic song. Instead, it's, you know, shorter songs. But I don't know, you know, I still really like it. Stuff like Two is my favourite one, Dark Side of Me, Hard Sell, as I said, Number City as well. Yeah, really good album. So on to the vinyl, the good old vinyl. So we'll start with the worst. And it's not worst because it's a bad album. Hell no. No, I'll tell you why. Now, yes, we lay. Why would I say this is the worst? This is, it has the track, what's the opening track of this? It is The Gates of Delirium, and that is one epic hell of a song. It's nearly as good as Close to the Edge, not quite that. What's wrong with this? Quite frankly, on Gates of Delirium, I didn't notice, but there was some scratch that makes it sound horrible, and there's a, it sounds like a witch is cackling while I'm playing it, and I don't really want a witch cackling while I'm trying to play. Yes, you know, I don't mind the odd snap, crackle and pop, or playing fine, but this just took it too, too far, so it's a piece of junk, really. Um, I didn't exactly pay much for it, I paid like 50p or a quid, no, a quid for it, so, oh wow, you know. I made a bit of a mistake there, I probably shouldn't have done, but an album I certainly didn't make a mistake on, Marillion's Fugazi, and I've been meaning to get this album for such a long time. I'm a big Fish Marillion fan, um, Misplaced Childhood, Clutching at Straws, especially Clutching at Straws are my top 20 favourite albums, Misplaced Childhood and Jester's both in my top 100. Now, I do think this is their weakest, no doubt about it, and this is the gatefold version, which is pretty cool, considering this is only 50p as well, it's in fantastic condition. Gatefold, it was in this Chester record store, if you ever go to Chester, go to the, it's called The Lands of Grey and Pink, named after the Caravan album, so that's always cool. Definitely check it out if you go to Chester. Awesome, one of my favourite record shops that I've been to, because it has so much cool stuff in 50p. Um, great condition as well, so yeah, 
not as good as the other stuff, but yeah, fantastic. Still a really good album. Definitely enjoy. An album I picked up again, 50p, but it was worth it just for the one song, to be honest. Phil Collins Face Value. I'm not a Phil Collins Genesis fan. I'm a big Peter Gabriel Genesis fan. I like Phil Collins' voice. I just don't like the style they pick, especially stuff like Invisible Touch. I admit I need to check out stuff like Trick of the Tail, which I've heard has proggy elements, but Phil Collins as well. And I do like what I've heard of the live album Seconds Out, and especially he does do a good version of Supper's Wedding. But this, I just love in the air tonight. It's a bloody good song. And for 50p, I pretty much just wanted that song. And I have to say, that's all I've played for. I will play the rest eventually, I suppose, because I've heard it's meant to be good, but... I don't know, I just love In The Air Tonight, cool song. Probably should have chucked that, chucked that bit too far. Okay, so I got for two quid, but worth every penny, and I would be looking for ages. Nursery Crime by Genesis. And this, of course, contains the epic musical box, and this is the gatefold, which is a very nice gatefold, like that. Definitely one of Genesis' best albums. Not sure if it's as good, maybe quite as The Lamb. Um, or something, but I'd say it's definitely one of their best, and especially the musical box. Oh my god, what an epic track that is. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a really, really solid Peter Gabriel Genesis album, really proggy, fantastic. Okay, next we have, and I'm pretty sure this was this month, yeah, no, this, this was, I think, Up Your Alley by Joan Jett. I think this was this month, I don't know. If it wasn't, oh well. So yeah, Up Your Alley by Joan Jett. Fantastic Joan Jett album. I absolutely love Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Um, always have. And it, it has I Hate Myself for Loving You. I'm sure, I, I don't know. But it's a really good album. I, I don't even know when I bought it, but whatever. It's a good album. Been listening to it quite a bit recently. Oh, this is another Yes album. Another Oh yeah, I did, yeah. This one works though. This was um this was only fifty p as well, weirdly. This was Tales from Topographic Ocean by Yes. And this is their double album, which I hear so many mixed things about it. There's people who love it, sing its praises, people who hate it. Now I've only listened to the first two tracks. It's basically four songs on two LPs, which is pretty cool. So it's basically four twenty minute epics. Which is which is pretty awesome, and I've only listened to the first, so um, revealing the signs of God's dance at the dawn and the remembering high the memory. So I've only listened to those so far and really enjoyed it. To be honest, definitely need to listen to the second half. Really enjoyed it so far. I think it's really good. You know, maybe not quite as good as the Yes Arm or close to the edge, but yeah, very good. Picked up some more Rick Wakeman. Love his solo stuff, so I picked up the Six Wives of Henry VIII, again, 50p, um, fantastic condition, I haven't played it yet, but I was playing Journey to the Centre of the Earth not too long ago, really enjoyed that, so I'll pick up some more, I think I have four Wick Wakeman solo albums now, quite a bit. Oh, an album I've definitely wanted to check out for a while, Jim Steinman's solo album, which is called, what, um... Is it called Bad For Good? It has Bad For Good on, which was later we were recorded by Meat Loaf. And this, yeah, it is called Bad For Good. Haven't checked it out yet, but going to very, very soon. I've heard good things about it. Heard that his voice is meant to be really good and he can sing. I mean, I doubt he can sing quite as well as Meat. But, um, yeah, an album I've been definitely wanting to pick up for a while, so a good find. Another 50p thing uh, that I thought was pretty cool. Gun taken on the well. I do like a good bit of gun, especially this is my favourite gun album, so I was pleased to get it. Um, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've listened to this album. Because I did see gun um, support, I can't remember who, but I did see them support some, but it wasn't this lineup. It was with the singer from Little Angels. And I really enjoyed what I heard, and I played a few songs from this, so yeah, I do like this album. I've said recently I've been listening to some Toto, I've been listening to some Toto 4 especially. So when I saw Isolation for a quid, which quite a few people consider one of their best albums, um, picked it up. Again, have not had a chance to listen to this quite yet, but um, definitely looking forward to. Do like a good bit of Toto. Now this is an interesting find in my opinion. Ted Nugent, Little Miss Dangerous. I know nothing about it. Well, I do know a bit. I know that it's not meant to be one of his best in hindsight. Um, I only paid a quid for it. And I literally bought it just because it's Ted Nugent. I remember him as being, well, on Guitar Hero 3, my favourite guitar hero game. You know, I do often talk about guitar hero. He introduced me to so much music. 
I remember there was a boss battle against Ted Nugent, and I was like, who the bloody hell is he? I mean, I knew who Slash was, I knew who um, Tom Morello was, I was like, who the hell is Ted Nugent? And I've just never ended up listening to his stuff. Don't know why, but I've always wondered, so when I saw it, it's like, okay, cool, I'll see who the bloody hell Ted Nugent is. And I still don't know, because I haven't listened to it yet. Okay. A bit more Joan Jet. This is Bad Reputation. This was without the Black Hearts. This was before the Black Hearts, just after the Runaways, to be honest. And yeah, I mean, this has the song Bad Reputation on it as a main thing, and it Do You Want to Touch Me as well. Um, yeah, you know, another really solid Joan Jet album. As I said, love Joan Jet. Just really good, solid 80s rock, to be honest. I think this was the 80s or something. Yeah, 81, so yeah. Just good 80s rock. And lastly, and possibly least, but I honestly haven't heard it yet, <laughs> is, this was only 50p, and I picked it up because why not? Bonham. Yes, this is, this is Jason Bonham's band, as in the drummer from Black Country Communion, and drummer who filled in Zeppelin on Celebration Day. Um, why did I pick this up? Because the name Bonham, and I like Black Country Communion. So I thought, hey, let's see what he was like when he seemed to be in a hair rock metal band. Because that's, I don't know, I haven't listened to this, but they just look with the big hair. And it was made, what, in... Da -da 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 -da, when was it made? I have literally no idea. But it's produced by Bob Eswin, I've just found out now. Yeah, I know pretty much nothing about this album. Literally nothing. I haven't even looked it up. I mean, I, I know so little about this album. For 50p, was it worth it? Who knows, I'll probably listen to it very soon, actually. I, I completely forgot I bought it, to be honest. <laughs> oh well, yeah. So, there are my finds for March. A bigger one than last month. Definitely didn't find get much last month. But yeah, found some really cheap stuff. I mean, all those vinyls pretty much were all totaled to maybe like 12 quid or something. So, yeah, I mean, some of them have got car boots, some of them are the 50p bucket in the land of grey and pink records in Chester, but overall didn't pay much for them, and yeah, I mean, who knows, I'm sure some of them will be misses, like Bonham, <sighs> not that hopeful, but, you know, as I've always, I've always, you know, been the type of person, I like to just pick stuff, if it's cheap, I'll pick up pretty much any type of rock, and give it a go, because it's fun, really, I mean, I picked up a Sally Oldfield album, remember, in January, that was a mistake, though. I've learned never to pick up a Sally Oldfield album again. Anyway, before I ramble on too much, this has been the Album Man. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to subscribe. As usual, long live rock and roll.